Good day, Great Twelves, and welcome back to our virtual tourism classroom. Today is the last and fourth lesson based on the topic of tourist attractions. And in this lesson, we will be taking a look at factors contributing to the success of a tourist attraction. Let me first introduce myself. I'm Penny Forsler. I'm a tourism teacher in the Nelson Mandela Bay District. Before I continue, I would just like to acknowledge the role played by Erika Ferreira, the subject advisor for tourism in Nelson Mandela Bay District Zone 1. Erika is responsible for the compiling of these magnificent PowerPoints as well as the activities that will be available after this series of lessons. I would also like to acknowledge the e-teaching and learning directorate of the Eastern Cape Education Department for making this possible. As we've done in the previous lessons, I want to first refer you to your curriculum if you take a look on the screen, you will see that um, that is an extract from your curriculum and we are specifically taking a look at factors contributing to the success of a tourist attraction. There's a list of factors up on the screen from excellent marketing of tourism products to universal access, from characteristics of a successful tourist attraction Grade 12, this is extremely important that you are aware of these because the presentation that I will be doing with you today is based on these bullets. Bullets. So the first um, two slides will deal with the excellent marketing of tourism products, both on a local and an international level. Thereafter, we will look at sustainable and responsible management plans. So please, you need to study these bullets, these headings, because that is the basis on what the questions are that you will be getting in your question paper. So spend a bit of extra time there and make sure that you know the content that is found there. Right. If we then take a look at the first bullet under the factors that contribute to a successful tourist attraction. The first one is excellent marketing of tourism products. Um, and firstly, we'll talk about domestic marketing. In other words, marketing within South Africa. You should never underestimate the role played by positive word of mouth advertising that goes a long way in allowing a tourist attraction to become a successful tourist attraction and allowing the tourist attraction to um, generate increased money at the end of the day. Now, ways in which domestic marketing could be done, are listed on your screen. Uh, I'll take a look at the first one. Uh, an attraction could offer value for money experiences, group discounts, special offers, alternative travel options. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more about that. Um, the first thing that, that is extremely important, both on a domestic and an international level, is the fact that um, we must offer a value for money experience. Any attraction that wants to be a successful tourist attraction must offer a value for money experience. Now that can involve many different things, um, group discounts, special offers. When we talk about alternative travel options, um, in particular, we start with activity-based experiences. And I can give you um, one or two examples of activity-based experiences in the Western Cape, in the Boer Cup, um, 
there is a Cape Malay cooking experience whereby tourists can visit um, a Cape Malay house, home, and actually experience the cooking and take part in the cooking process in the house of the person that is offering the activity. Now that is an activity based experience. A further one could perhaps be uh, bicycle tours that are offered in the township. So you could have instead of a township tour in a vehicle, you could have a township tour in uh, on a bicycle. Collaboration with other attractions. There I could perhaps just make mention of the Nelson Mandela Bay Pass, whereby you can buy a pass or purchase a pass for a certain amount of money and that will allow you access to different attractions. If you take a look at the left hand side of your screen, you will also see examples of um, such marketing um, that is particularly in the Western Cape, the Table Mountain Cableway and the Table Mountain uh, ticket to go up the Cableway. Marketing of additional facilities available at the attraction. If an attraction perhaps has uh, conference facilities and they market these conference facilities alongside the other attractions that are available, or activities that are available at the attraction, that is one way of uh, doing excellent marketing. Uh, if I could just indicate to you at the bottom right hand side, so I'm just going to remove, there we go, um, websites, official websites with ticketing options, photos, virtual tours is an excellent way of advertising. Um, with the digital era, everybody is looking on websites, looking for information, and that is an extremely excellent manner in which um, tourism product owners can market their product. If I could also just make mention here of um, social media advertising, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all of those different um, social media platforms that can be used to market any particular destination. Then we take a look next at international marketing. Um, can I remind you uh, that when we we discussing um, international marketing, at the moment um, South Africa is actually competing on the international market. We are competing with other countries throughout the world. So we need to make sure that we offer a product that will encourage international tourists to visit South Africa. Um, remember also that South Africa is a long haul destination. And so we need to take that into account in our marketing that we need to encourage visitors. We need to have a unique selling point that will attract um, international visitors to our borders. For example, the wildlife in South Africa, the big five, um, our beautiful beaches that we have, etc., etc. If we take a look at the bullets on your screen, you will see that uh, the first one mentions a comprehensive user-friendly website. Now that also came up on the previous slide where we spoke about domestic marketing. Uh, if I could just here make mention of the fact that often with successful websites you will find that the option is there to change the language. So you could perhaps um, have click on the button on the website that says uh, you want to have it in French or in Italian. And that is a very effective way of attracting international visitors. Advertising in international media is also 
a way in which um, tourism products could be marketed on the international platform. Uh, just remember here that middle and low season um, advertising these products, you need to take into account the middle and low season and high season when it is for various um, international countries. Thereafter, you look at the offering of multi-attraction packages. Um, there, I would like to just refer you to the left-hand side of your screen, where it mentions the London Explorer Pass. That is an example of what could be done in South Africa, whereby you purchase the London Explorer Pass, which gives you access to various attractions and you also pay discounted prices at the same time. Engaging the media is extremely important in excellent marketing of tourism products. Um, you can attract the media, give them information, and therefore you can make the international community aware of what South Africa has to offer. And the last bullet on your screen refers to emphasizing of the responsible tourism practices at the destination. It's important that we advertise our attractions as res practicing responsible tourism because there's a large market out there um, that are willing to pay extra to visit an attraction that practices responsible tourism. On that note, we can see that the next slide comes up on the coming up on the screen refers to sustainable and responsible management plans. Remember the first one was excellent marketing. We now have sustainable and responsible management plans, which is the following bullet that comes up on that very first slide where your curriculum was given to you. Now, sustainable and responsible tourism ensures that the people in a tourist area, the economy and the environment benefit from tourism. Now, we'd just like to stop here and take you back to grade 10. There you learned about sustainable and responsible tourism. You learned about the three pillars, people, planet and profit. You didn't study that in grade 11. It's not part of the grade 11 curriculum, but in your grade 12 curriculum, you will also at a later stage um, study sustainable and responsible tourism. Now the three pillars there are highlighted, people, economy and environment. So go, let's go back to what we're looking at, what makes the tourist attraction successful, sustainable and res responsible management plans make the attraction um, successful and if an attraction wants to implement sustainable and responsible management plans they could consider some of the bullets indicated on your screen. Firstly, include short and long-term benefits for the host community. Examples given there is employment and entering into partnerships with members of the local community. Also local procurement, whereby uh, an attraction purchases what they need at their attraction from the local community. And that specifically pertains to the economic pillar of sustainable and responsible tourism. The next one on the list refers to the social well-being of the host community that must be taken into account. Management must pay fair wages, must be, create social awareness and the protection of cultural identity. Now that speaks to the social pillar of sustainable and responsible tourism. And the last one on your slide, uh, I'll read it for you consider and minimize the effects on the environment. 
Examples of this could be conservation of natural resources, controlling of visitor numbers, and effective waste control. Now again, that speaks to the environmental pillar that I referred to earlier. Another aspect in your curriculum that contributes to the success of a tourist attraction is the efficient behavior of staff and management. Can I just quickly remind you, the first one was excellent marketing. The second one was sustainable and responsible management plans. The third one speaks to efficient behavior of staff and management, but at the same time, ethical behavior of staff and management. Uh, look at the right hand side of your screen above the image you will see an explanation of the term efficient working in a well organized and competent manner. Now efficient staff are staff who are smart and presentable. They wear name badges. They greet visitors in a friendly manner. Efficient staff deal with inquiries effectively and efficiently. They're able to attend to the needs of disabled uh, visitors and are able to cope with large groups. They are also able to use appropriate equipment if properly and can handle complaints in the correct manner. So if you, a tourism attraction, wants the attraction to be a successful attraction, the staff should behave in an efficient manner and there are a number of examples given to you on the screen. The next one is, of course, ethical behavior of management and staff. Now, ethical behavior is doing the right thing. And at all times, both management and staff must be honest and truthful. Management and staff must not mislead visitors or guests. They should also be trustworthy and they must also not use the resources of the establishment for personal gain. If the uh, traction perhaps has a vehicle that is available and the manager or staff member at the attraction uses that vehicle to transport his or her family or to transport um, other people for gain, um, over the weekend while the vehicle is not being used by the attraction, that is an example of unethical behavior. Management and staff must also be loyal to the establishment and respectful to guests. So again, go back to where we started. If the attraction is to be perceived as an excellent or successful tourism attraction, staff must be efficient and ethical. The next that comes up on your screen is a positive experience of your visitors. So if you want your tourist attraction to be successful, your visitors should have a positive experience. There's a list of um, various strategies that are on your screen on the left hand side at the moment. I'll go through them and then I also want to refer you to specific things in the images on the right hand side. Firstly, the layout of the attraction must allow for easy access. There must be clear signage. The information in the brochures must be updated and it must, the brochures must be available. There should be minimal delays with queues and transport services. The staff should be easily identifiable. They should be able to deal effectively with inquiries. The surrounding area should be clean and well maintained. And in the same vein, restaurants and souvenir shops must be of a high standard. A visitor that feels safe and secure will experience value for money at the attraction. Now, please take a look at the images on the right hand side of your screen. You will see the top one on the left is the Table Mountain Cafe. There, if you take a look at the staff member, she is easily identifiable. 
the cafe itself is clearly um, visible and it is um, the signage is there to indicate that it is the Table Mountain Cafe. If you also have a look, you will see that it is obviously a restaurant that of, is of a high standard and it is clean. The bottom image shows you that signage is evident. There's clear signage that tells the people where the toilet facilities are. The layout is excellent and allows for easy access. So all of those aspects add to a positive experience of visitors, which in turn will contribute to the success of a tourist attraction. The next factor that will contribute to the success of a tourist attraction is safety and crime prevention at this particular attraction. Safety rules should be displayed prominently. If the floor is wet or uneven, it should be indicated. You will see there the sign um, on the top in the center of your screen. All attractions must have a crisis management plan. The next bullet, first aid equipment and trained personnel should be available. Imagine somebody falling at an attraction and breaking their leg and they will need trained personnel and that trained personnel will also need first aid equipment. Access paths must be kept clear and must be easily accessible. You don't want an access path to be blocked so that if there is some type of evacuation that the visitors to the attraction are not able to get out. Fire extinguishers and fire exits must be access accessible and clearly indicated and we also should know that fire extinguishers need to be um, checked on a regular basis. Security guards must be on duty. Secure parking and lockers must be offered together with surveillance cameras and that is extremely important that um, your visitors to the attraction feel safe and they feel protected. There should also be warning signs if there are any possibilities of criminal activity at the particular attraction. The next bullet is a general welcoming appearance and regular upkeep. That is the next um, factor that contributes to the success of a tourist attraction. Various um, strategies that can be implemented. Creation of a relaxing atmosphere using landscaping. Landscaping refers to um, making the surrounding area, perhaps the gardens, look attractive, neat, well-maintained. Um, you also, as a tourist attraction, need to make sure that refuse bins or even if the attraction does practice recycling, then recycling bins, they must be evident. They must um, also be in a place where visitors to the attraction can see them easily. And if you take a look at the bottom of your screen, you will see also clearly indicated that that is recycling. The left-hand side bin is only for aluminium cans. The middle bin with the red on it is for glass bottles. And on the right-hand side, general waste. The next um, bullet that comes up on the screen um, refers to facilities and public seating which must be well maintained and in the same vein excellent standards of hygiene in bathroom facilities. Displays must be cleaned regularly and well maintained. You don't want to visit an attraction and there's dust all over the displays and the, ex and the exhibitions. And signage 
should also be relevant and clear. So again, grade 12, I want to take you back to the second slide, or the, yeah, it was the second slide in the presentation that had your uh, curriculum on it, and the general welcoming appearance and regular upkeep is one of the factors that contributes to a successful tourist attraction. Then the next one that will contribute to the success of a tourist attraction is meeting the needs of people with disabilities. And if I can just interrupt myself here and mention to you that it's important to use the correct term. We speak of people with disabilities and not disabled people. It is the correct term, people with disabilities. Now, people with disabilities include various uh, individuals that could have physical disabilities. Now, an example of a physical disability would perhaps be somebody that cannot walk and is in a wheelchair. You could have uh, people with sensory disabilities, which could be visual and hearing disabilities, in other words, perhaps blind or deaf. People with intellectual disabilities. I would give an example there of somebody that has perhaps been in an accident and has had a degree of brain damage. They would be classified as a person with an intellectual disabilities. But grade 12, it doesn't stop there. We also look at frail elderly people, others in need of temporary assistance. An attraction that wants to be a successful tourist attraction must meet the needs of all of these people. Now management can take various steps and some of these are given on the screen. The first one is websites must be user-friendly and provide relevant information. They must contain photographs or plans of key features. An audio version of the marketing material should be made available for people with visual impairments. So therefore, if you have a visitor to the attraction that is blind or um, cannot see very well, an audio version of the marketing material should be made available so that person can also have the full experience that the attraction has to offer. We continue with meeting the needs of people with disabilities. Brochures and site maps should, be clearly, surely, should clearly indicate facilities for the disabled and also whether guide dogs are allowed in the attraction or not. That would be a very important factor of uh, consideration if a blind person or a person who is visually impaired was visiting an attraction. A braille version should also be available for people with visual impairments. Now just if you look at the right hand side of your screen you will see what braille is, a form of language, written language for the blind comprising of characters with patterns of raised dots and there's also a lovely image there. You will see that that is an example of braille. Another um, factor that is important to consider is that people with disabilities should never have to pay more. Even if the establishment has to incur additional expenses, they should not have to pay more. So if your attraction, you have a, a, perhaps a hotel and you have to have in that um, hotel, you have to have um, rooms that cater for physically disabled people that will cost the hotel more but at the end of the day, they may not charge those people who have disabilities extra. It's important that parking spaces should be of the required space. A parking space, um, it, there are regulations that refer to the size of a parking space for people with disabilities. And these parking areas should also be regularly maintained so that other motorists don't just park their vehicles there. If we continue with meeting the needs of people with disabilities, we need to ensure that staff are trained in a, a, a manner that they can deal efficiently with people uh, with disabilities. 
you have to have wheelchair accessible entrances and that is evident in the bottom picture of your screen viewing areas are avail should be available that is um, the excellent example is the viewing area at the top of your screen where that visitor to the attraction who is in a wheelchair can also interact with the animals your information kiosks should be indicated and also accommodate wheelchairs audio and visual announcements should be done Information should be made available in a variety of formats. And the last one on your screen at the moment refers to the public toilets. Now, if you take a look at the right hand side of your screen, you will see there is an excellent example of bathroom facilities for people with disabilities. In particular, in a wheelchair, you will see there are handrails and other facilities that are available there. Now, if we take a look at the term universal access on your screen at the moment on the right hand side is the universal access logo. Please take note of that. Now, what is universal access? It refers to the ability of all people to have equal opportunity and access to an environment, a service or a product from which they can benefit. But that is regardless of that person's region or location, in other words, where they are from, where they uh, live, regardless of that person's disability, regardless of that person's socioeconomic status, that is, whether they are rich or poor, regardless of the person's gender, the ethnicity, or their religion. Universal access is about tourism for all. But in the same vein, it also includes people who have small children in prams. It includes the frail and elderly. Universal access also is required if somebody is temporarily on crutches or you have an image of an expectant mother, a pregnant mother-to-be on the bottom right-hand side. Of your screen. Now, you can have various uh, strategies in place that can um, ensure that people with disabilities are accommodated at the attraction. Fee reduction days, whereby uh, people can come in and visit the attraction uh, at a discounted price. The required prayer facilities for different religions on your left hand side of the screen you will see there is um, at the top the facilities for prayer room for members of the Islam faith. Restaurants should cater for a variety of dietary requirements. You will see uh, halal on the bottom right hand side of your screen and vegetarian food but at the same time Staff should be sensitized. Staff should be aware of how to deal with people. Another strategy is frequent communication with organizations that provide information about the needs of people with disabilities. And the right hand, left hand side top of your screen, uh, you will see there is the Na um, Na South African National Council for the Blind who can offer um, advice to various attractions. Staff should also be trained in accommodating cultures and languages. We are now going to um, view a video, we're going to play a video for you, which will give you an excellent insight into the term universal access. So I will be back after the video and trust that you will enjoy watching it. The general public generally believes that accessible tourism is provided for the use of visitors with disabilities. 
and tourist areas are required to provide a barrier-free access. The fact is, accessible environments are built to meet the needs of a wide range of people. In addition to helping the physically and psychologically challenged pregnant women, children, and seniors, also benefit from these comfortable, user-friendly facilities that help them get around. Someday, you and I will also need accessible travel environment. How do the travel needs of people that require easy access facilities and most other people differ? How can we provide user-friendly, easy access travel? The four primary parts of all travel itineraries are meals, accommodations, transportation. And sightseeing. Let's examine how needs of people with easy access requirements can be met in these four areas. When taking tour buses. The needs of the physically challenged are often neglected. More preparation and consideration when making travel arrangements would make tours more pleasurable and relaxed for these individuals. One service attendants can provide a box next to the door of the bus to make the climb into the bus more gradual. To assist senior citizens, pregnant women, and children get on and off buses. Two, service attendants can provide assistance to people with disabilities. Three, tour arrangers can choose buses equipped with lifts to facilitate the embarking and disembarking of the physical challenged. Resolve transportation problems using helping aid and assistance from service attendants to allow passengers and travelers with disabilities to enjoy their travels. I'm sure we've all seen the following situations at scenic attractions. People with disabilities have been neglected at beautiful scenic spots. Incorporating more user-friendly planning into the construction of scenic areas can make these scenic spots more accessible to the users. Assistance from service attendants and well-designed facilities pathways can facilitate moving about. Want safety and enjoyable dining experiences. Dining locations also need to be user friendly. Simple helping aids make places more user friendly, and the thoughtfulness of business owners make it easier for them to move about. 
everybody wants a safe dining experience. Grade 12, welcome back. I trust you enjoyed that video and found it insightful in the concept of universal access. We will now continue and look at the characteristics of a successful tourist attraction. Remember the, the previous number of slides that we did were factors that contributed to the success of a tourist attraction. So they were all factors that made the, uh, the tourist attraction a success. Now we're looking at characteristics of that successful tourist attraction. There are a number of, of characteristics that we can take a look at and the first one is that the attraction will often have more visitors than expected. Uh, in that vein I'd like you just to take a look at the right hand side of your screen I trust that you recognize that as being the Eiffel Tower, but I would like you to take a look at the length of the queue with the number of people waiting to visit the Eiffel Tower. So I think that you could undoubtedly say that there are more visitors there than expected. If you also look at the bottom image, you will see the number of people in that middle area that are walking up and down and visiting the tourist attraction. A successful tourist attraction will also have repeat visits, which means that if tourists, visitors to an attraction had a value for money experience, then they will then revisit that attraction. A successful tourist attraction will also generate more income than expected and have a positive effect both on the local community and the local environment. When your actual number of visitors exceeds the target number, um, it will ensure that the attraction um, has doesn't suffer financial loss, let me put it in, in those terms. But on the other hand, if your attraction does not attract enough visitors, it might have to close down. And the implications of that for the people and the community are of financial ruin. But if you want your actual number of visitors to exceed the target number, Management must determine that target number, and obviously it must be a realistic um, target number, and decide on a pricing strategy. The tourism product on offer should be innovative and should also be reinvented continually. And I'd just like to refer you to the right-hand side of your screen where you see a different experience offered at the aquarium, that is with Shaka Marine World, Dolphins by Starlight, where people can go and enjoy a meal while they are viewing the animals in the aquarium. And at the same time, um, they can, it's done under starlight. Then only once that uh, the attraction has reached and surpassed visitor target numbers, managers can regard that attraction to be successful. The next slide refers to repeat visits. So a successful tourist attraction will have repeat visits, which means that people will come back and back and back to visit it. How can an attraction ensure this? By providing excellent service, by providing um, a value for money experience, modernizing their facilities. And I'd just like you to take a look at the right hand side of the screen. That is the Table Mountain Cableway with the cable cars. The bottom one is as it is at the moment with the modern um, 
up-to-date cable car. If you take a look at the top one, that one was taken way back in the day um, before the facilities were modernized. Another way of increasing repeat visits is by offering discounts to repeat visitors. So the second or third time that a visitor visits an attraction, they can um, be given a discount and that will ensure that they come back to the destination. As I said earlier, it's so important that a tourism business never underestimates the value of positive word for mouth advertising, word of mouth advertising. If a tourism business has a good name, it will most definitely continue to attract visitors again and again and again. The next characteristic of a successful tourist attraction is that the income that is generated exceeds the target figures. So in other words, they make more money than what they expected to make. And how can this be done at an attraction? Firstly, uh, the number of visitors to the attraction can be increased. The amount that visitors to the attraction spend uh, must be increased. So instead of just having an attraction, have a souvenir shop, have a restaurant, and thereby people will spend more money at the attraction. Another way in which the income uh, generated could be made to exceed the target figures is by addressing seasonality. Thereby, you can perhaps, instead of having various activities um, in the high season, offer more activities in the middle or low season. Now, in that vein, I'd like you to take a look at the top of your screen on the right hand side where um, the arrow says the out of towners have gone home. Locals, it's time to take Ushaka back with a combo ticket at kids prices. So that is definitely addressing seasonality. Another characteristic of a successful tourist attraction is the positive effect that the, that the tourist attraction has on the local community. Management should involve the local community in planning and decision making. In other words, what you require is buy-in from the local community. The local community must be made to feel part of the attraction. This also means that poverty will be reduced as well as the level of crime. If you wish to reduce poverty and, and the crime at an attraction or in the vicinity of an attraction, uh, employment should be created, business opportunities can, should be created so that the local um, community are involved and are generating an income for themselves. And at the same time, the management should help create a sense of community pride by protecting values and identity of the community. If you take a look at the gentleman on the bottom right hand side of your screen, you can see that they have um, bought in to the values of that particular attraction. If the um, attraction has a positive effect on the environment, um, then obviously it is going to be a successful tourist attraction. How can management um, ensure that this happens? They can allocate a portion of the income from entrance fees to um, conservation. Management should also ensure that strategies are in place to minimize pollution, recycling and conservation of energy is also um, an important factor to consider here. And creating an awareness 
among tourists and providing them with information about the environment is also a very important aspect to consider when wanting to have a positive effect on the environment. Right, grade 12, we are now going to spend the last um, 10 or so minutes of the lesson looking at activities and examples that come from um, past question papers. The first one comes from the November 2015 examination or national examination paper and I'm going to read the extract for you. Visitors from all over the world visit the Niagara Falls. The main contributors to the economy around the Niagara Falls are Canadians from Ontario as well as tourists from the USA. Very little income is generated from other areas in Canada in, and the rest of the world. A large percentage of day visitors and overnight visitors come from the United States of America and remains constant, which means the same throughout the year. The first question here is essentially testing the knowledge of the person writing the exam about the destination. It says, name one unique feature about the location of this icon. And there, I just want to just pinpoint you to what the essence of this question is. It is not about the icon itself. It is about the location of the icon. Where is it located? And there you will see the answers come up on the screen. The unique feature about the location is that it is on the border between two countries. It is located between on the Niagara River between the two countries. And it is also, you can mention, it is located between the twin cities. So there you will see that that question is a question that requires you to give knowledge of the icon. The next question, you're going to have to start applying the knowledge that you have of the icon. Explain one way in which the province of Ontario benefits from cross-border visits to the icon. So we are looking specifically here at how the province of Ontario benefits. So we're looking at these aspects that are coming up on the screen now. Job creation. Day visitors using tourist facilities in Ontario generate revenue which then obviously results in the multiply effect. Overnight visitors staying into Ontario's accommodation generate income. There's a positive word of mouth advertising by American tourists. And you also have return visits from satisfied tourists. So grade 12, you need to understand here that you these are questions that will require you to apply your knowledge of a successful tourist destination. And I just want to interrupt myself quickly here and just um, tell you that the questions that come up are in this section four of the question paper will not always be based on tourism icons as we have studied them. They can be based on any uh, tourism attraction, which you will see when we look at the next slide. But let's continue with the Niagara Falls. Discuss whether seasonality would have an impact on the occupancy rate of accommodation establishments in Ontario and Canada. And there, the, it's a bit of a trick question because the examiners are testing the fact that you understand what the term seasonality is. And also that um, you are able to read in the extract that little income is generated from other areas in Canada. So most of the visitors to the Niagara Falls are from Canada and the USA, and therefore seasonality will not impact on this success of this destination. The, also addressing seasonality, uh, the number of visitors remains constant throughout the year. So that indicates that seasonality would not um, be a factor to consider here. The following um, question is based on the V&A waterfront. And 
the Vienna A Waterfront um, received the award for Best Destination for Responsible Tourism at the World Travel Market in London. Uh, it gives you the date there. Since 2008, the V&A Waterfront has invested 30 million rand in resource management. A sustainability committee was established, an environmental policy was drafted, and a carbon emissions measuring program was put into place. Visitors, visitors to the waterfront can participate in its green conscious practices. Now, before I even put the questions up on the screen, I want to take you back to the slide that's um, was about uh, environmental uh, and sustainable and responsible management plans that must be in place at an attraction. The first question here is give one example from the article to support the V&A Waterfront Sustainable and Responsible Management Plans. You are required here to give an example from the article. So if you look at what has come up on the screen now, you will see that all of those come straight from the extract. In the extract, it says an environmental policy has been drawn up. A carbon emissions measuring program has been put into place. A sustainability committee has been established. Visitors can participate in green conscious practices and there was a large amount invested in resource management and each and every one of those bullets can be taken straight from the extract. The next question requires some application. It says state two ways in which uploading this information on the Western Cape tourism webpage contributes to the success of the V&A waterfront as a tourist attraction. The answers are up on the screen there and refer specifically to marketing, which was the very first slide that we did in this um, presentation. You will see that the V&A waterfront will be excellently marketed locally and internationally. You can also see the next one speaks to having environmental policies in place and receiving the award for the best destination for responsible tourism. Tourists support attractions where they have proper management practices in place and then it goes back to social responsibility and green tourism practices. And excellent marketing increases the awareness of their status as green practitioners. So you will see in the last question here, grade 12, you will be required to apply your knowledge. Right, we are now done. I thank you for um, listening and for taking part in this, the last lesson on tourism attractions and wish you well for your forthcoming um, exams and also wish you well for the rest of the term and hope to see you again at some stage soon. Bye-bye.